Good afternoon. It was an excellent presentation and interactive cases from uh, Dr. Kaufman, and I think I'll try to rejog your mind. And it is not so uh, brain teaser as it was the last session. So I'll try and see to start with the li lighter context. So let's see how well you know your tracers. It's just a lighter touch of the presentation. So you can vote now, please. Interesting. So if I go back, I think it's uh, choline, and you can see the liver uptake, and uh, it, it sometimes can uh, depict gallium, which could be a good answer, but this is choline. The next one. You can vote now, please. Majority knows the tracer. So fluoride PET CT is the right answer. What now, please? So the basics, you know pretty well. So that's FDG PET. So there was basically a consensus. I didn't have the whole body. It is just the limited section, which is routinely we do it in pediatric patients. And they normally have got uh, CHI, congenital hyperinsulinism. So this is a tracer we use. What now, please? I think it's easy to pick up because that's the last one which is on the screen. You could have just guessed it was the last one. <laughs> so I think it was the lighter touch. Now we go some brain exercise. So I think this is a, probably the last one I think, yeah, sorry. So if you look at this one, and if you look at the previous one where you recorded a different answer, so you see the difference. Yeah, this is gallium. This is case one. So you got a 23 years old male with joint pain so I'll show you the image. If you can see it, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I think probably it's displaying well. Vote now, please. Excellent. 
This is multiple hereditary exostosis, diphysial ecclesia, and this is the MRI. I couldn't get the uh, plain films which would have shown the uh, exostosis. And this is, there is an incidence of uh, one in 50,000 and it's autosomal dominant and it's a benign tumor. So that's the reference if you want to look into it. Case two, 42 years old male with history of CLL and colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer resected two years ago. Screening CT scan showed low density lesion in liver. The question in the MDT was, would you be able to comment that this is CLL or this is colorectal MET? Let's see, what do you have to say? This is the whole body. So, I cannot this probably, you got the, you don't have the pointer. So you got us, sorry. You got a solitary lesion in the liver between segment five and eight. And there is a solitary focus in the mediastinum, which was, and there is focal uptake in the, just in the cervical, upper cervical region of the mandible. Yeah. So that's one lesion, one lesion there, and this is the area of in doubt. So I'll show you the fused images. So there's a lesion here, and probably you can see it there, probably that's probably in the maxillary alveolus. So that was discounted as a dental, and there was chain of lymph nodes in the left cervical, which was most likely post-inflammatory. This area was very intense. Normally you don't see any intense uptake in CLL, it's mild uptake. This was about 12 SUV. So either I said probably there is the differentiation of the disease and this area was because it changes completely. If it is CLL, then they will go in and RFA this lesion. And if it is CLL, they will continue with the treatment. So you can we open now, please. Yes, I would agree with that, that this is basically between these two. But if you look at the activity, the evidence behind the liver mat is the intensity and they confirmed it by doing the biopsy because the SUV at this area was about nine. Sixty-seven year old male with uh, prostate cancer presented with back pain. Can anybody see anything? It's difficult, I think, probably it's too far away. So if I point out there is faint uptake on this planar image here, and there's something, just believe me, there is something there and there. Ignore this, this is migration, and this is, uh, and, Please vote now. What would you like to have? You see a lesion here, you see a lesion here on the coronal, probably you see something here and you see something here. It's 
So the higher lesion, this is probably L3 and this is L4. So you know this is A and this is B. Vote now, please. Very good. So if I go back, so you can see that A is a metastatic, B is an hemangioma with possible a fracture. There is a cortical defect there. And I reported this as a hemangioma with a fracture, a microfracture. Eighty-five year old male with uh, prostate cancer presented with neck pain. We did further imaging, and that's the lytic lesion. And this is quite intense for a degenerative, but I agree it may basically give a false positive, and you need to have a cross-sectional imaging spec CT. Twenty-five-year-old male with left knee pain and swelling. I would agree with the osteosarcoma because you can present, but the pain film, this was confirmed to be a malignant pigmented below nodular synovitis, which is a very, very rare entity. Typically, you, you, you should be able to see some low signal, but or with uh, pigmented uh, PBNS, but here, because of the malignant process, you have lost that. There's no hemorrhage within it. And patient had the amputation and presented with multiple meds. So this is just from the literature presented in 30s. There is no predilection for any. And 46% is reported to for occurrence is malignant transformation. Seventy-four year old male with prostate cancer, all of them are prostate cancer, presented with uh, hip pain.
If you wanted to bet, where would the metastasis was? I haven't got the question, but uh, any volunteers? I think it's too far, basically you're sitting too far, you cannot see it, I think. Sorry? Which one? Yeah, I think this basically, I was reporting this and it was very, very rounded and I wasn't happy to call this a degenerative, so ask, I asked them to do an MR and this is the lesion there in the head of the femur. Forty-three years old male with history, one year history of spinal fixation, with two months history of lower back pain. It is just to show you the difference between a planar imaging and a spec CT, how easy it makes it for a nuclear physician to report, especially with the query of metastases. So the history was spinal fixation, one month history of lower back pain. That is the fixation. What further imaging do you need? So what is your diagnosis now? Fifty-six-year-old male with cough and fever, abnormal chest X-ray. We did an eighteen FDG PET CT. Excellent. Sixty-two-year-old female with recent oophorectomy for ovarian cancer with rising tumor markers. Voice 
quite enjoyed it. I think it's it's not to, there's the lesion there and there's the uptake. It cannot be ureter. Ureter will be somewhere sitting there, and uh, it will, unless there is a TCC which will be causing that. But the history is the ovarian, and probably the correct answer would have been right ovarian vein thrombosis. Thirty-seven-year-old female presented with cough, night sweats, and loss of weight. Gallium dotate scan was performed. Vote now, please. Interesting. I think this is it's a multiple and um, carcinoid tumor, dip neck. This is a very rare entity. And we have got a collection of uh, five patients up till now. And uh, it's a neuro neuroendocrine hyperplasia, recognized by the World Health Organization as a pre-invasive precursor to carcinoid tumor and tumulates. Seventeen-year-old male with Burkitt's lymphoma presented with confusion, irritability, and urinary retention. Award now, please. I would agree, in most uh, circumstances, we would need an MRI. Patient had two MRI, they were negative, had a spinal uh, tap, and that was positive. So, patient had lymphoma with leptomeningeal involvement. So, if I go back, so if you see, that's intraspinal involvement. These are the exiting nerve roots which were involved. These are the sacral nerve roots, that's meningeal enhancement. These are the two points where those nerves, exiting nerve roots were there and those intraspinal. Although there wasn't any splenomegaly or nodal disease. 55-year-old male presented with headache and right visual disturbances. Gallium was performed. Can you vote now, please?
Interesting. Let's go back. So there is a lesion here, which is avid. And there is some changes, high signal there, which is positive here. The MRI reported normal on this side and patient had right side visual disturbances. If you see very, there is very subtle signal change, which is very difficult if you're just, if you don't have this information. So there is a small hemangio, uh, the meningioma sitting there, which is compressing the exiting optic nerve in the optic uh, canal there. So there are three meningiomas. So it's just the teaching point about the meningeal findings, so one should be aware of these. 34-year-old male, irritable night sweat and weight loss. What now, please? It was lymphoma with meningeal involvement and the exiting nerve roots. 22-year-old male with history of recurrent UTIs. Question was whether there are scarring or not. We did a DMSA scan. This this what it came for reporting. Exciting. And we did a SPECT. So this is the finding of the, so we, there was contamination involving the mediastinum and lung and there was bilateral clots. So the history, sorry, history was 70, 7 year old male with prostate cancer, bone scan was performed.
Interesting. We did a CT after the bone scan. So if you see there is low density. And this was after a few days. That was MI. I will just run quickly. I will just show you the images. So this is vasculitis. Post-treatment. OK, this is a nice one. 17-year-old girl with history of vaginal paraganglioma. Resection two years ago, pelvic recurrence, indium octatized scan to plan surgery. Indium octatized scan was performed. This is prior to surgery. This is the last one, and then I'll stop here. Excellent. So, patient had a gallium. See the lesions there? Lesion one, two, and three, and four. Same, same patient. We went up to the chest and we saw this lesion here. As you guys showed, shown you the answer. So basically, this patient had uh, indeterminate blessed lesion and non specific uptake in the thymus and pelvic recurrence with surgical referral to, for further assessment. And it was juvenile fibroadenoma. I can finish this. Thank you very much. <laughs>